Wait, you're hiding out from the mob. Something like that. <laughs> you're lying. You hope. Actually, you in some kind of trouble? Are you always such a cop? You got a problem with cops? I have a problem with people who can't mind their own business. You've had a run-in with the law. I didn't say that. You didn't deny it. I don't like to be hassled, Jack. And I don't like the people who do it. You keep your nose clean. And you won't be. My nose? Is that what you're looking at, G-Man? Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into the locker room today. I'm Alan Locker, and I grew up watching As the World Turns and Guiding Light. I joined the PR department there in 1997 and remained working on both shows for 13 years before they went off the air. As I was stuck home in quarantine, I realized that I was missing my Oakdale family and thought some of you might be feeling the same way too. I hope you enjoyed that clip. Do we have any Carjack fans tuning in today? I'm so excited to have this these incredibly talented actors here with me today. The Oakdale canvas was so lucky to have them and I feel lucky they agreed to join me to talk about their roles playing Carly Tenney and Jack Snyder. Please help me welcome daytime Emmy winners Maura West and Michael Park. Mikey and Maura. Hey, hey. I had to play the G-Man clip. Oh, I, I love that. The G-Man clip. Was that. Was that from our first <laughs> Yeah, your first it? time meeting. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my yeah, and I learned so much. In Montana. In Montana. Yeah. Uh, that was a great return, I thought, for Carly. It was a very sm smart and well done. Because that's I, I, I just come back after having my first son, right? And so they, yeah, yeah it's very yeah. smart, well done. Oh, I'm, yeah, not, I'm not saying it's well done by me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm mediocre at best, but I'm Listen, just talking about No, you're not. Here. No, you're not. Everyone should know <laughs> that that clip said, you know, if we, if we mark where that clip was to the end of our relationship in 2000, what, 2010, 10. was it? Yeah. The, 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 the amount of growth that we both had uh, as, as a couple, but especially uh, my ridiculously bad acting skills at the beginning to the end were just, I mean, more helped me out so much. So. Yeah, um, I'm glad you showed that. Now show the I last was, one. Now show the last one. Oh, I can't. It's too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I I was wondering if it was when you had Benjamin. That's I was wondering yeah. why you yep. the the first um, time you left. Um, Michael, did you screen test with Ms. West? No. Uh, the, when I auditioned for the Paul Ryan role originally, yes, a year before I think. Um, a year before Jack started. But oh, I, okay. I, you know, uh, Kelly Hensley doesn't know this, but, or Kelly Minahan doesn't remember this, but I, I screen test for, <laughs> as Jack with, uh, with her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she doesn't okay. even remember. <laughs> no memory of it. I love, her. I love her, but I would have remembered, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mara, who did you screen test with? Do you remember? Yes, I do. Sean Christian. Oh, okay, Mike. Oh, yeah. I remember some of my lines. Poor Rosanna, <laughs> wounded Rosanna. And then we had all this thing, and then we had this like hot kiss, and I was like, I'd never done it. I was 22, just out of school. Are you supposed to really kiss them or not kiss them? I kissed him. <laughs> how, how the hell, with all the lines you've learned over the years, that you can remember that from yeah. that? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> I mean, me neither. I mean, that is really crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was it like for you, Maura? I mean, you grew up as a fan of the show. Like, were you nervous as yeah. shit? Totally, yeah. And the, the, you know, you go to these things and there's all the, you know, the finalists, all the people screen testing are there. And although you want to support your fellow actors, of course, I've always been that way. There is a little bit of checking them out. There is a little mm -hmm. bit like, oh, oh, I don't know, she looks, she's good. hot, wow. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, and so you have all that you have all that stuff going on while still trying to do your work and not be nervous and, and be supportive of the women around you. And, and I was alone in New York. I never, they, they put me up in a hotel. I was like, I don't know where to go. Wow. Or I, I don't, I remember I had called my mom from the hotel room. When I was leaving the hotel, I was like, how much was that phone call? Cause I'm not making them pay for this phone call. I'm like giving them like $4 and 79 cents, you know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was, I was really nervous about it. And it was, um, Who's the casting director there? Vince Liebhardt. Vince Liebhardt. I mean, what a what a terrific um, man, gentleman, and a talent. You know, 
<laughs> yes, because he found me, right? No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. No, but he really was. I mean, he got all the New York. You know, I mean, Michael, you know how many awesome actors ha ha went through the, as well? Vince, Vince Broadway cast, stars, and right. everybody went through. I think Vince so, cast so many of them. And a lot of them. Julianne Moore, Meg. I think Vince did all of those people. Marissa Tomei. I think he did all of And, and Michael, was he there when you as well? I'm assuming. I'm assuming he was. I, I guess I don't know. I I remember li almost literally nothing. I, this, 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 this is, is more or less. <laughs> yeah, this is more or less. <laughs> Hi. Years, uh, la <laughs> Years later, when he when he had moved on, decided to move on from the show, I went up um, to my mailbox. Anybody who knows me knows I never go to wherever floor the mailbox is on or the producer's <laughs> on. You'll never see me. So very, once in a very great while, I'll poke my head in. So, and, I, and in my mailbox was the original VHS cassette that I had sent from California to Vince Liebhardt. Wow. I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thanks, no thanks. Bye. Wait, so, so after Boston <laughs> University, did you yeah. go to California? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you went there first. Very, very, I mean, very briefly, because you know, at the end of the um, at the end of the four years that some of these actor when you get your BFA, they have the the leagues or the showcase, whatever you want to call it, and casting directors and agents and stuff go and watch all these up and coming talents, young talents, and um, and he was there, so he saw me doing my graduation thing and tracked me down in in California. Wow. So Michael, I, was, I wasn't did, there very long. When they cast you, did did you know that you would be paired with Maura at that time? No, 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 no. They tried me with everybody at the time. They they had me. <clears throat> if you recall, the first year I was there, uh, was it uh, Alexandra Alex, Alexander? What's her name? Sherry Alexander. Sherry, Sherry oh, Alexander. Yeah. They tried oh. me with Sherry Alexander. They tried me yeah. with Kelly Minahan, which was one of those things we got trapped in a closet together, if you recall. Uh, and and we were like, no, no, this can't happen. This can't work at all. John Hensley uh, then pulled a, a, a prank on me because I had dated everyone in Oakdale at that time, waiting to be paired with someone, hoping to be paired with someone for longevity purposes. Uh, and um, John had this uh, this gag and told and and had everyone in the building had me convinced that, you know, Jack is going to be a gay character. And I'm, I was like, wait, but I, I don't have a problem plan. I can, what, are you sure? And I remember just going through uh, all the, the emotions thinking, okay, all right, all right. Then the resolve walking in and finally uh, in the, in the, in the, in the booth, I was called in the booth and given a note and I'm saying, well, wait a minute, I'm really confused. Cause I was kind of given the, the, the information that Jack may be gay and they all just started laughing. What? I was the last one to know, uh, of course. <laughs> so, and then I, you know, um, that would have been fine, by the way. You would have been, it wouldn't have mattered. Oh, you would have been it amazed. Have, no, it wouldn't have, it, it wouldn't have mattered. I, like I said, I was, I was down. But it does um, sort of. <laughs> I was just confused. I was just yeah. confused because they had me pairing with so many different people. I didn't know how to act with these, with these other uh, Right, because uh, when you started, I, I think, and then more returned in 98. What year was Benjamin born? Um, 90, 1996, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 96. Christopher was born in 97, yeah. That's crazy. Older than dirt, Michael. We're, we're older than dirt. I refuse no. to believe that. Not yet. Not yet. I'll let you know. I'll and more, one of our fans, <laughs> Freeman, said he attended Boston University, too. Ah. Um, and so did, do you and Cynthia Watros talk about BU? Did y yes. Uh, I... She yes, she doesn't remember the same things I do. <laughs> she was a, a year or two above me, and so you know when you're in a program like that, it's a very small, um, very small uh, competitive uh, program. I remember watching her really closely. I remember she. I remember parts that she did. I remember watching her in the Cherry Orchard and Cloud Nine, and I remember seeing her in uh, Death and the Maiden. She was just terrific. Um, she doesn't remember me at all. <laughs> I found that hard to believe. You are memorable. Yeah, I, I did. I did too. Well, she, didn't, she doesn't remember. Yeah, but, that, but, but, that, but that's okay. But yes, we we we've talked we've we've talked about it a little. Uh, going going back, I must say though that when they did make the decision that Jack was going to be kind of like 
in Carly's orbit, um, I I have to tell you how excited I was because I knew how fantastic of an actress uh, she was and 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 what a what a lesson I was about to get um, in so many different ways. Actually, I didn't know the extent of the lessons I would be getting, but as as far as um, her abilities as an actor, just. Uh, far outweighed mine and so i i was really really excited and 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 completely up for the challenge so yeah, it was I, like really that, great. I like that you said that not that i was better in any way because i never was but that we continued to we never sat in it we never said oh we're good this is good enough we never oh. did that we allowed each other i think to grow to grow as actors and to support each other through some risky things that we were trying to do and, mm -hmm. and get better. It's not like, oh, this is good enough. We're done now. No, we bounce no, we, things. We, we definitely bounce learning. things off of each other for yeah. sure. We kept getting better and, and, and kept, kept learning, which so is we were We were never, uh, we, yeah, we were never satisfied at the same time so, uh, because I remember having, someone asked me yesterday, what do you, what do you do with all those long days on the soap? It's like, well, uh, they, they weren't, they were long days because we were working nonstop. I mean, we had our time off, but the time off that we did have after rehearsing in the morning, Maura and I would get together and just run lines over and over and over and over and over again. And um, and that's the first time I really, I, I actually really learned how to listen and and react to uh, something new that was being thrown at me. Because is there, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'd say nine times out of ten, I'd be in a corner uh, going over my lines, going over my lines, mine. And Maura <laughs> would went across the studio, going, "Who are you talking to?" <laughs> I'm right here. I'm over here. Come on over here. And I just thought, oh, geez. Yeah. I never wanted, I've always felt like I never wanted to let her down because she was always so spot on with, with words <laughs> in general. But I mean, with, with her lines and, and uh, her memory, it was just like, uh, she's on, it's, it, 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 no one compared uh, to memorizing lines. And we, if we were up at the end of the day, we were like, pop, 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 pop. Yeah. Um, and that's the way, that's the way we always kind of wanted it. Isn't it Maura? Yeah. I mean, we were the, we, you we don't kind of saved. Do the, you don't want to do the, if you do the homework on set, you're wasting everybody's time. You're right. Yeah. The right. homework's totally. got to be done at home or in the, in the green room or in the dressing room. We sometimes, we, we, we did play cribbage. We did play. <laughs> we were always running lines. And Michael we had some video like, games in his. Uh, and, yeah, room. he watched Michael, the, definitely. Yeah. I can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> <laughs> what did we always used to play? What was it? Not cribbage. Uh, gin, gin, gin. We played. We gin. played gin with Benji. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but we did play a lot of cribbage. You're if ruthless. I, You're just ruthless if, at cribbage. If I asked a, a that's the truth. A, a question: <laughs> Is there <laughs> something you could pinpoint that you learned from the other? I think I just said it. Oh, uh, I really, I really, I really listen. learned how to listen and to be uh and and to, and to just to be a great partner, uh, a a, a great co-star, if that's the word you want to use, for lack of a better, word. and a good friend. I mean, I just um, I learned so much. Uh, and she and and to not be satisfied and to not be complacent and to keep pushing and driving forward. I I I always felt that way. And when and, and you could tell when when she went off to have uh, a child, I you know and they paired <laughs> me up with somebody. No, seriously, the, when they paired me up with anybody else, it was kind of like, oh, okay, I can do it. I'll do the work, but it's just not going to be. It was never it's ever. It'd be ugly when Mora gets back. <laughs> it was never ever going to be the same, and I always knew that sooner or later Jack would have to eat crow and apologize for something well, she, he didn't. For she something did he have didn't do. Five children, so then you yeah. had to have five other leading ladies. <laughs> True. I think Jack got married what eight times. <laughs> I think that what what something that Michael that I learned from Michael is that I was very serious. You know, I was a very serious, kind of serious actor. You know, and I still am. I take the acting part very seriously. I really do. But there is time for fun. There's time for laughing and joy. And, and I didn't really know that before. I was just like, oh, I, if, we, have, we would find, we would laugh and laugh and laugh, but we didn't waste any time. It was like, we would laugh in, right, in the right times and then get to, as soon as they said five, four, three, two, one, go, we would be right, right there. But my God, the joy, the laughter, the fun that was infused within the work, I hadn't experienced before. And you, you, you know, 
you can do it the other way. You can do it as a kind of a serious actor, but boy, it's a lot more fun <laughs> to, to laugh. And you know, and you, you just, you feel better about your quality of life is better. Um, certainly knowing Michael, my quality of life is a lot better, but oh. I think that's a really important thing that I learned from him in addition to all of the working closely with someone and trusting and the intimacy, which I don't think I've found since Michael, I don't think I ever will. That, that that actual um, trust of the intimacy. I mean, I hope I do, you know. But mm -hmm. I, I, it was it was very very special, and I don't think actors find that a lot. I think we're very lucky in that way, or at least I am. I don't want to speak for him. Well, listen, it was always, you know, uh, Maura, you were making me laugh just as much because it was we we had a little game. It was about it was yeah, about making fun. the crew laugh because those yep. guys never left the floor. Yeah. They never left the floor. They never they were, saw the sun. No, they didn't. They're always at their stations and they're always working. They they worked yeah. harder. Well, we the crew worked. Yeah. And this is something I learned from uh, from Martha too, is that the crew, listen, don't ever let them hear you complain. Don't right. ever let them hear you complain. That would be the stupidest thing you could possibly do. Because yeah. number one, they're not making as much money as you. Number two, they're working 10 times harder than you are because they got to be there for every single scene. So when we got on set, it was just... It was a joy to make them laugh. Yeah, if you could make them time. laugh and lighten their, you know, lighten their load in a way, it was just a uh, goodness gracious. That was that's a another, gift. That's yeah. another reason why you did your homework ahead of time because otherwise Hell yeah. you'd, be, you'd oh. be making you'd be making those people wait. And yeah, oh, that's what I mean. you never you don't want to do that. Michael and I come from this similar backgrounds and you know, uh, kind of blue collar, hardworking, um, love thy neighbor kind of people. And there's no way I'm going to make these people wait around as I stumble through my lines. Ever. I just was not ever, it wouldn't matter what job I had. I said, I beat be myself actor, up. It could be whatever it is, uh, whatever job I had, I would never make people wait around or any of that. Yeah, and you Mojo, were. you knew that I just beat myself. I, I would have those days though, let's be honest. I had a lot they of those days. They weren't as bad as you thought though. You just were <laughs> so funny about it. You had such self-loathing when you'd forget a line, but you actually <laughs> still went, you know, 80% quicker and your worst day than, you know. Uh, than you well, did. it was just one of those things though, but it just, it would eat me from inside out that I was like, God, I studied for forever on these. And but when you, you just- you'd, But you created such goodwill with the, with the crew and everybody that they were all with you. Nobody was going, <laughs> oh God, this guy again. Not, not Never, not once. You have you no know? idea. I don't yeah. know though. I really don't know. <laughs> they, they and it, it is how you they treat everybody. Know. They they won't hold it against you. They know you're working hard. They yeah. don't hold it against you. Yeah. They really don't. Especially then. I mean, we were in every, every day driving from, our commutes were long. We were e e every day and they knew that. We Brutal. Were, Brutal, and they had Brutal. long commutes too. Listen, yes. I, I I moved out to to West Nyack because everybody from the seemed like everybody, uh, all of our like core group of friends, all moved out here. And then of course, as soon as I move out here, they moved to Bergen County. They moved like twenty <laughs> minutes away. Oh, thank you, darling, Annabelle Jane Park, everybody. <laughs> um, so that um, <laughs> uh, and so you know, and then I'm like. I'm alone here in uh, Rockland County. And I left too. I would live there, and then I left. I went to Connecticut. <laughs> right, right. And so the deal was, all of a sudden, we, you know, our studios were on uh, at the broadcast center on 57th Street. Yeah. <laughs> in like 2000, they move out to Brooklyn. So my commute went from like yeah. half an hour in the morning to an hour and a half in the morning. Easy. Yeah. And, then the and, all, and sometimes it's three hours home. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of studying time in the in the car. Yeah, yeah. I, so, did, uh, I shouldn't say this, but I did get quite good at. Well, so we both did at um, learn reading the script while we're driving. Which I don't. I don't right. really want to. Hey, don't recommend to. that. Don't recommend that. <laughs> also, also, we would we were on the phone running lines sometimes. You remember in the car if we got stuck and is the commute was terrible. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That is. Yeah, we, that's great. That's a new one. I haven't heard that. <laughs> Uh, we were on the phone, on the phone, running lines. It was so awesome. We always found ways to 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 get it done. Yeah, we did. We found ways to That's get it done. Funny. We sure One of our... did, Michael Park. <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> Booyah! Uh, Butterfly dancer was curious if either of you kept the compass. Shall Shall I, Maura? Yes. Oh no! Did you stamp on it? <laughs> no. When we were leaving. They were selling off everything. And um, I have uh, one of Barbara's chairs up in my bedroom. I've got uh, uh, the the <clears throat> Snyder Farm, long Snyder Farm bench in my foyer. And 
And because uh, we were all fighting for stuff, it was kind of great because we had some really great. Mora has dishes. I remember that from the last yeah. show. <laughs> Mora, as a goodbye Side gift, as a goodbye gift, <gasps> gifted me the compass. And ah, I mean, I want to get emotional, but it's upstairs in my. It's upstairs. I keep it right by my uh, by my on my bedside table. Actually, oh, I'm so glad so it's right somebody there. Has and it's, oh yes, I have it. I have, I have it. Well, you have it too. I, you have, I have it too. Of yeah. course, the properties department isn't just going to have one. one they, have, right. they have to have doubles. Yeah. You know, for you know, so uh, so we both we both have the compass. Yes, but more gifted me the second one, which was yeah. just it makes it that much more special. Well, I love that you each have one. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I know the answer, but you would jump at the chance to work together again, correct? <laughs> Without a, without a doubt, in a, in a uh, second, in a heartbeat, in less than a heartbeat, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. Second, Fan, I'd love it. Fans would love it. Lori was asking, "Do you have a favorite um, story that you've told on the show?" <laughs> oh, story, story. You know, favorite storyline, and also if if there was um a scene, like just a, a scene that you both worked on that you just loved together. You know, besides a story, because you might not have liked the story, but you loved that scene. There are a couple of things um, I I loved and will always love. And I think it solidified who we were as kind of a couple. It kind of solidified I in my mind, in I, in my limited memory um, <laughs> of limited this. Limited mind. I, I and, and Maura will say I'm wrong. and But I will say that, um, and she's probably going to be right. Uh, Teague's <laughs> cabin solidified wow. the Jack and Carly, the, yeah. the the carjack kind of connection, I think. In for me, <clears throat> as far as scenes, man, there were so many. There were so many. Uh, the you know, uh, Hannah uh, marrying us in Montana was very, very memorable to me. Oh, the um, first, that's the first wedding, right? Yeah, and the fact and that, isn't that Sada Sarah Ramirez, Ramirez? Sada Ramirez is that, married. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, Sarah, uh, wow, I don't even know how I remember that. <laughs> that's a long time ago. <laughs> uh, there's so many things, but I, I, I yeah, so many great memories and stories, and I'm sure more has a lot more, but <clears throat> but uh, I do remember at one point. Chris Scoutman saying, Hey, we're short on a, we're short on a show. Can you guys take these one page monologues each and go and, you know, take a look at it 15 minutes and maybe we'll come back <laughs> 15 minutes, yeah. one page model. I'm talking yeah. words. And, uh, we kind of looked at each other and go, yeah, cool. Yeah. And in 15 minutes we landed, I think we nailed it the first time we did it. And they were like fake vows or something like that for a wedding wow. for like a, 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 a flashback situation, but we nailed it the first time we, we shot them. So I do remember that. That was kind of cool. I, I, I remember the scene, speaking of the compass, when, um, there were scenes that were very special to me. Remember Grant Alexander directed those scenes when Carly and, oh, because when Grant. Carly and Jack would fight, they, they would always, it would end up okay. Right. It would end up that same day, even There'd be a result. Yeah, yeah, you know, they would just be, and and it was unusual that there would be some like real goodbye, and those scenes when she doesn't she didn't she give Jack the compass or he, he didn't take it but she gave it to him. Yes, That's I didn't take it. Right. Uh, and 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 he left, and he actually left, and she said, "Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, no, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave," and he left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grant. Grant did uh, direct those. Yeah. Those. That was the first time we were both nominated for lead actress and lead lead actor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you won. I love those. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. I like those scenes a lot. I thought those and and the, the different ways that the director um, played with the set. We never did scenes on the stairwell or no. in, the, in the you know um, things like that. I that really that stands out to me. You know, but there's so many. I mean, you can't every day, even in the early on when remember when Jack was pretending to be some other cop or something, he had, <laughs> had a beard on and Jake, uh, he was pretending Jake, to be. Oh my Jake. gosh. I can still <laughs> I smell loved it. it. Yeah. I loved it. I think Jack he he rescued he rescued Carly from quicksand, I think, twice, you know. They <laughs> you know, he delivered yeah. at least one baby. I mean, you know? quicksand, just, amnesia, so I deliver babies. We did so many things we would know. I mean, come on. Yeah. There's nothing we can't tackle so awesome. as actors. 
it, it, because of because of our because of our stint on as the world turns i'm telling you for sure the yeah, hogan sure, sheffer sure. hogan the sheffer thing. pushed that envelope hard yeah yeah is there uh, one of the fans was writing while i was listening to that story is there a favorite not something that happened on camera some a favorite moment of working together maybe cracking up or just being proud of what you just did on set some you know something that fans wouldn't necessarily know about the, the only things that are monumental that i i'm so glad mora was in my vicinity uh during um 911 comes to comes to mind mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time together that day uh with anthony uh, Herrera, the late great Anthony Herrera, um, and and as far as cracking up, we did that every day. So <laughs> there's not so one every day. Yeah, yeah. particular thing that the the proudest moments for us again, and I would say were the one we'd have five scenes in a row or six scenes in a row, and they were mm -hmm. like one take scenes at the end of the day, and everyone got out under the you know under the time under the you know. Uh, right, right under the gun. It was th those were the moments, and I knew it, that everyone could count on us. And the fact that, uh, well, I, I would hope that everyone could count on us. And and the fact that, you know, I had this champion by my side, uh, and ultimately, like, amazingly supportive uh, co-star next to me. And we just we we always tackled it. We always got it done. And I I don't know I don't know why, but for some reason pressure we we kind of enjoyed the the pressure of it all and and i don't know that i could say that for a lot of people you know uh well, it's certainly pressure when chris gatman comes and says hey take this and go do it you know when you didn't have the night yeah. before to study that was that, that was a complete anomaly though it's it definitely really a was. challenge that's a I challenge mean, these, yeah but um I, do, I mean again i would say um it's it's not a funny thing but our our the, the events that happened after our dear Benjamin Hendrickson passed mm. brought us closer together. And Michael, Michael's the one who called me and said, told me that he passed. And that was good that I didn't, that I didn't hear it. Hear some, it other, from any, yep. some other hear way. Hear it from anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was important. And then um, I think, about, but then a good memory of us off um, camera was when we were in Las Vegas and we had both won together. Yeah. And, and then, and then after the show, we were going to go and kind of party, but we stayed in the same hotel. We had our spouses with us, and we went up and changed. We went down. We're waiting in the, like the cab line. Remember, <laughs> waiting for the cab to bring us to the party. We're like, I, I was just, I was just crying watching both both of those speeches from 2010 and the 2007. Yeah, I was good. To, good I mean, to hey, we 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 won, and we didn't have jobs to go to the next day. You yeah. know what I mean? We didn't yeah. have jobs. Yeah. Well, so, I had one. It was just very brief. <laughs> That's we can we can do a whole show on that, Mr. Locker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, let's do it. Um, uh, Shirley crying, was asking, was way. was there uh, anyone? Uh, we'll we'll come back to him in a little while. I don't, I don't want to stay there. Okay. We'll come back to Benji. Um, Shirley was asking, was there anyone when you both first got there that was like a mentor to help out and guide you? Uh, you want me to go first, Mojo? Oh, or you, you uh, go for it. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, I, I know that there are people that constantly, consistently, kind of offered. You know, I am was and am still this way that I'm it, like in my dressing room. Like I'm just not the. I'm not hanging out in the green room. It's just not me. Um, it, it takes you out of your game. You know what I mean? It's, it's not me. Yeah. Well, yeah. since you're since you're on it, and for people who didn't watch the Daytime Cares event again, uh, um, the the Sean Christian story of your dressing um, room, would you? Because that is quite a story. Would yeah. you share that? So this I don't is, know if my, Michael really may not have heard this story. I didn't. Yeah, this is a good story, Michael. <laughs> I, I, this is 1995, so I had just gotten there, maybe early '96. Um, and I had gotten in the dressing room, Benjamin, the, the same dressing room that Benjamin Hendrickson bring, stole from me. When I got back, he was in there. In the corner. On my sofa. I said, you in better, the corner by the you roof. better clean this sofa. You better <laughs> bleach that sofa. <laughs> Mine. But anyway, um, so but I was down there because I liked I, I smoked at the time and I would be I wanted to be right next to the roof. 
you, you go out in 57th Street, I have a cigarette out on the roof. And uh, and I, uh, so I had this nice gesture, but the, the, the door would slam. It was like the spring on it. It would just poof, like right behind you all the time. And who wants that? So Sean Christian um, he said, oh, I can fix that because Sean can literally fix anything. And um, so I remember him climbing up on a chair, like, I don't know, with this break at not. And he took the spring, and then the thing, whatever it is, the arm, just went, poof, chopped him, just like a chop, poof, right in the face. And I am pretty good with injuries and wounds on people, but I saw, like, the bone. It just Ooh. went, poof. It was totally clean. Thank God, the cut. You know, it was just sharp, clean, and it was like, and he was like, how is it? And I was like, mm. <laughs> God, you're going to be good. <laughs> You're looking good. Thanks for fixing my door. Oh. And then they, and then they took him to the, the ER and he had to get stitches and everything. And then he, and of course, his show must go on. He came right. back. He came back. <laughs> and we just shot it from the other side. You know, oh, it was just goodness. like. <laughs> and I, he, I he was being a good guy and he got whacked. <laughs> yeah. I still feel very, very guilty about that. But I, anybody, I love scars. So I always tell him I, I gave you a little bit of character. I think scars are awesome. That one's due to me. <laughs> <laughs> you look better than ever. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> wow. And for you, you was there somebody? <laughs> for me, yeah, of course. Uh, Martha, Martha Byrne. Martha Byrne yeah. was, you know, showed me the ropes and 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 introduced me to everyone there and made me feel. And we had met. Um, there's this club, La Barbat, in the city uh, at the time, and I was doing some. Yeah, some yeah. serious yeah. shit went down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seri some serious <laughs> shit went down there. <laughs> yes. Ask me no questions, I will tell you no lies. One hundred and fifty percent. I wonder what it's called now. I don't think is it even still open. Well, not oh, now. No. No. Anyway, um. Don't shine a blue light in there, whatever they call it. Oh God! <laughs> don't don't touch a thing. Light. Don't touch a thing. Where you mm. <laughs> But uh, I remember, I remember after Smokey Joe's Cafe, just going and, and hanging out there one night. And there's these really, I was there with my wife and like uh, a couple of my friends who came to see me uh, after the show. And uh, there was these really good looking, really good looking people dancing. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, they all kind of look alike. And I, they look familiar to me. And of course it was Martha and she comes over because she, you know, she was involved with uh, the whole Broadway scene too and said, hey, I know you. And I said, I think I know you too. And she goes, weren't you in Smokey Joe's Cafe? And, and we just uh, uh, kind of hit it off that night. And then like, a, I'm gonna say like a month later or two months later, uh, I was auditioning for Paul Ryan. It was that time. Um, and then when I, again, when I got the gig for uh, Jack Snyder, the first person I saw in the green room, Martha Byrne. And she's like, hey, welcome aboard. <laughs> I just thought that was just so matter of fact and just so honest and real. And I'm like, thank God for people like Martha Byrne. Those Jersey peeps are good. No, it could have been, it could have <laughs> been the opposite way. You know, it could have been, you know, yeah. I, I, I finally cracked the nut that is John Hensley, but I could have met John Hensley my first day. And it could have been like, hey, Find your way. Away. But I mean, <laughs> thank God. Uh, it go was, go it was find Martha. your way. Do you remember trying to get to the production off in, in, on 57th Street? <laughs> I needed a Sherpa. I think I think I was literally there. In all the years I was there, I think I was at the office once. I it's like, very I easy to get lost. I also remember. I don't know how saying, to get there. I also remember saying, hey, uh, Mikey, are you going to the office? Yeah, could you get my script? <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> She, Maura had a Sherpa. <laughs> hey, Maura, how do they do? How do they do the scripts now? Do you get them uh, digitally? Is that the deal? Yes, you get. Well, right now, I get my my it's only my size. I don't get the whole script, so I just get my scenes digitally, and then also in your mailbox at work. But they're not mailing. They don't mail it anymore. Oh, that's brilliant! So it's all digital. Nobody was. Either. Nobody reads them anyway. <laughs> why? Why mail? Right. Yeah. Why waste the paper? Why waste the paper? And yeah, the money yeah. to mail to all these scripts to people too. It's a big. That's a big operation. Um, yeah. I don't know if you remember Jamie Dudney, Barbara Mangell's daughter, who played Georgia on the show. Uh, yeah. She 
she was uh, well, sent a note to sent a note to me. She says she loves following your kids more on uh, when you post about them and their musical theater Aww. journey. And she had a question mm. if Michael ever gave uh, Kate or Joe any advice. I'm sure he did. Don't no, know. those kids are stupid talented. <laughs> and they, they, that is all homegrown talent, baby. That is nothing. Yep, I, and listen, I got, I got, I was lucky enough to work with the fantastic Joe West uh, in, um, in uh, Sound of Music. And they're uh, airing that. Is that tonight they're airing it? Are they residuals, it's, baby? It's, it's, no, but this is a free, they're airing it free. I saw Ariane Reinhardt who played the oldest Bachelor. Yeah. Oh, I totally oh, forgot that you were in it together. I yeah, totally oh my forgot. god! Can you imagine me going yeah. to like being this like the stage mom on that set? It's like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like, what? We had that, that was such a talent gift. Alone. I'm like, but I know him. Leave no, <laughs> <laughs> no, we wept as soon as we saw each other. We started crying. We do that, guys. Anyway, I interrupted you, but yeah, I think they're I think they're airing on YouTube or something. They're airing the Sound of Music, the, the live one, your your version. Like soon, anyway. Oh. But sorry. No, sorry, you didn't I, interrupt me. I, I just like the the answer is no. I, she was just saying she loved those stories and was curious if Michael ever gave. Speaking of Joe Mora, what was it like seeing him in a Christmas story on Broadway the first time? Oh, um, I don't think there's a word yet, but <laughs> to create to to to. to express that that feeling that I had. Um he it was, was it was extraordinary. He was, he was fabulous. fabulous. And he, he was, was fabulous. Really, really young and he went downstage I know just from my life, like downstage center, that's where I want to be. Like I'll take any you know, and, and to see my young son cross downstage center singing this song, solo song, and was just and, and kill it was just, it, it, it was so, it was overwhelming. I still, uh, it's, I, I, I am still running off the gas from that, which was so many years ago. So many and years I, ago. Yeah, and I still, it still fuels me, so. That's amazing. Yeah. And Michael, what were you gonna say, Michael? I saw him twice. Oh, nice. He's fantastic, he worked with Pastor Paul before I did. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Smokey yeah. Joe's was your Broadway debut, correct? I mean, technically. Technically, uh, because I, I was the understudy of Billy Bigelow in, in Carousel at Lincoln Center, but I never got on. So, right. So, uh, what was that experience like for you, Smokey Joe's? Yeah, it was. It was good. It was good. It wasn't. You know, those those guys all hung out together in L.A. You know, they they had their out of town in L.A., and I was kind of like the new kid coming in, and so it wasn't really. In hindsight now, I can say that it wasn't really my show. Uh, they were just inviting me into their show kind of a thing, but I did open it on Broadway. Um, it had its ups and downs, but I still, um, it's connected to uh, Fred Owens and Adrian Bailey and Ken Ard and and, um, and and Victor Trent Cook every once in a while, he, he pops up in my timeline. Um, but uh, yeah, those, those guys are like forever my family. Be forever my family, and we lost, you know, B.J. Crosby, the great, talented B.J. Crosby, and Patty Darcy. Um, and my, and oh, I saw uh, Brenda Braxton not too long ago. That was kind of special. For they did a they did a revival at the Little Schubert on Forty Second Street, and we all went to the revival. My wife and I, and I saw everybody there, so we had a little bit of reunion. So it's really sad. <laughs> That the shows that you opened on Broadway in 1995 are being revived now, and then you're being <laughs> and you're being invited to the revival. That's... Okay, <laughs> you know that is th yeah. yeah. Well, that's, didn't that's Christopher definitely... just have a birthday? Didn't Christopher, Christopher just Park? have a? Yeah, didn't. Yes, the 21st. He turned 23. Right, and I remember when he was born and coming to your New York City apartment. So talk about time. I was yeah. like, when you're when Laurie posted that, I was like, you know, blew my mind. He finally shaved his facial hair off too. So everyone was super happy about it that. It is crazy. He's, he's starting his job. So yeah, well, it's even crazy to look at uh, Joe more. Oh, from, the kid is beautiful. from a Christmas beautiful story children. to to now. Like he he's yeah. taller than both you and Scott, isn't he? Mara is just taller yeah, than both he's, of you. Joe, how tall are you? Like six one. He's he yeah. all of a sudden 
we didn't know it was going to happen. And all of a sudden, whoo, you know, way up there. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's 20 years old. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. So let, let's go back and talk about the fun Catherine, times with Benji. Catherine is 18. Catherine um, 18. Believable. Yeah, and I no. was watching, watching you curtsy with her at, at the Emmys. Yeah. She was eight because it's 10 years ago. She was eight. Was she? Two, Usually I said wow. they had to be 10 when they went, but maybe because it was like the last one. I took her a little early. Yeah, yeah. The 47th the forty seventh annual Daytime Emmys is the 10-year anniversary of you and I receiving yeah. this award together? Yeah. What, today is? Yeah. Today's oh. the 47th, yeah. Ah. Oh. How about that? Hmm. Miss Miss West nominated <laughs> again. Is this 13? Is this 13 or 14? 12. 12. This 12 is the times enough. <laughs> no, tw I'm always the bridesmaid, Michael. <laughs> There's three Everybody. behind. There's the three bride. behind I'm you. Hey, There's work, three. I, yeah. No, no, I'm very. I'm <laughs> well, very, amazing. I love what I do, and I'm very comp I'm a competitive person. You guys both know that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hello, hello, Yankees and Boston Red Sox. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Oh my gosh, remember that, Michael? We'd learn lines. We'd go to some Yankee games once in a while. We'd learn lines like like in between hot dogs. Yeah. Like, we got to go to work tomorrow, so yeah, let's be here. Be here. Hey, <laughs> well, well, since we're talking Yankees, let, let, let's let talk about your your hubby mm -hmm. and what he did there. Oh, at Yankee Stadium? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you were, were you there? <laughs> no, I, oh, I helped him oh, do you it. Helped get the ticket. <laughs> yeah, because we had seats right behind home plate. And, and um, no, we got the thing up on the, the screen. Jumbotron. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. My husband, who um, has been a diehard Boston Red Sox fan his entire life, um, knew pretty much knew the only way to get me to marry the likes of him <laughs> was uh, uh, <laughs> proposed to me at Yankee Stadium, which he did <laughs> on, on the jumbotron. <laughs> on there, and I look down here, and he's kneeling on the thing, and everybody's so wonderful around us. And do you know who was at the game? Is Vivian Gundaker, one of the producers from? And there, remember, there's no. Yeah. I think we started to have cell phones, but it wasn't the same as it is now. Like you, you know, didn't have it on video, yeah. No, no, no. But so she called me though, and was like, "Hey, I was at that game. Congratulations!" <laughs> <laughs> you know? it's pretty cool. Yeah. So I said yes. That's funny. Do you remember meeting him for the first time? You have such a good memory. No, my with lines. <laughs> <laughs> Only with lines. I can't remember anything else. Um, I could. We could probably do a scene from ten years ago right now if we probably. if we had to with a with a gun to our head. Fans um, would absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't remember meeting for the first time. I just remember remember. I just remembered, and you guys know because there's such a en positive energy that fills the whole room when he walks in. There's not, there's not a, a, an aggressive or mean or negative uh, bone in his body, you know? Hello. Hi, Baz. <laughs> I love That's that. Bas it's Basil. That's Hi, Basil. Yeah. I love Basil's top. Oh my goodness. He's, he's How old is Basil he's now? Seven. Just turned, he's 13. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but Scott, yeah. So you guys, I know you. Uh, I know that you know what I'm talking about, right? In, in a room. I mean, he he. he Are you kidding uh, me? Isn't to say that he's some wimpy, wishy-washy guy. Mm -hmm. he ain't, no. He ain't. But you're gonna get the benefit of the doubt first, and you're gonna get. The same <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get Listen. the kindness that everybody gets, and and then if you get him mad, it's good luck to you. Some superlatives. <laughs> some superlatives about your husband. He's he's. Usually, he's usually one of the smartest men, if not the smartest man in the room. Um, he's an, 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 an impeccable, impeccable listener and yeah. will let you talk yourself. Sometimes let you talk yourself. Go ahead. Let you talk yourself uh, uh, into a corner before before correcting you in the most wonderful way. But he's that. just uh, what a what a great conversation. Um, and I miss him. I miss him. You know, I, I I was the beneficiary of a lot of those conversations when Joe was doing um, Sound of Music uh, and when Joe was doing um, and rehearsing for and doing uh, 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 Christmas Story. So, yeah, I, I miss that. I miss that. I miss the two of them. I miss the just the 
the everyday conversations you'd have with these wonderful human beings. Well, I'm glad yeah, you're here time. together. As Basil um, said, good times. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael, your your speech in 2010, saying I don't know where uh, what tomorrow is going to bring, yeah. but I know that I'm going to be with my Laura. wife. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm still with uh, her. It's almost 25 years for you two, and you met in college, right? Yeah, we did. We met in college. Uh, <clears throat> And and she's the one who forced me. Really, she she forced me to audition for the uh, the musical in what 1990, 1990, no, nineteen eighty seven. What was it, Joseph? Was that the first one? No, it was uh, it was um, Guys and Dolls. Oh right, right, right. So she 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 forced me to audition for Guys and Dolls because you know it'd be cool. The two of us were, we'll be in the ensemble together and we'll be in the back of the, uh, the theater and we'll do our homework together because we won't be working all the time on stage. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks a I'm lot, like, Lori. I'm like, really listen, good. lady, I am not gonna get cast. They're not gonna cast me because I'm not a theater major. I'm not a music major, and of course, I get cast as Sky. And she unfortunately did not get cast. She's the reason why I'm still doing this. She really is. And you know what? I, I say this to students when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm teaching. When you find someone or, or people around you to give you unconditional, forget unconditional love, that, that you know, you, you, hopefully a lot of people experience unconditional love. But a lot of people don't experience unconditional support. Unconditional support is something that is so, ah, so necessary when you go into this business. And, and it comes from the, the, the oddest of places. Um, and it came from, for me, in so many different forms. Of course, it came from Lori and my parents, which for a lot of actors, it doesn't come from their parents. But you have this, like, I, it, it was like this automatic kind of um, superpower that you're given uh, when you get this, uh, you know, this, this unconditional support. And I always felt like I had that superpower. I always felt that way. And then it happened again. And as the world turns with not only Martha Byrne, but of course, Mora, just giving you this unconditional thing. And there were times when, yeah, Mora and I, we got into some scuffs. Who we doesn't? May not have, Who we doesn't? may or may not have talked to each other for a bit, <laughs> but I'm, but I'm, I, I never lost that support from Mora ever. Yeah. And I was well, always you, wrong. I was always wrong, by the way. But um, most of the time, most of the time, <laughs> um, your parents are great. And mm -hmm. now I, it popped in my head, but I don't remember why. Why did we have an amazing dinner at Benihana with your parents? <laughs> I don't know. It was it might have been my I, birthday. I, it maybe it was on 55th Street. I have that memory. I have no idea birthday. why. <laughs> and Georgie and Georgie's been gone. Jorge, Jorge has been gone now uh, five years. It's oh. sad. I mean, boy, oh boy. I miss him. So, well, I, I I don't want to talk when you said, but I wanted to talk talk to happy memories of the wonderful Benji, mm. the laughter that you both ensued with. I mean, talk about some of the pranks he would pull because I know he was one of the biggest. I was never the the object or subject of of a. I wasn't the recipient a either. Yeah, but um, I do remember being er very early on not knowing television very well, learning mostly from Larry Carpenter, the director, Larry Carpenter, who, who, who now has directed me on Denver Hospital since I've been there. So it's sort of it's just awesome, but he was very, early, very influential in me learning this so quickly, like learning it so quickly. And then working with someone like Benji, who would be doing a scene and you'd, you'd, you'd stop and you'd get, out, get notes and everything back when you had time for that, you know. Now it's like notes, schmotes, sink or swim, you know. But um, back then, you'd get notes, and people would refine a scene or whatever. And I remember being outside, and 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 Carly was being like attacked by someone, or someone was trying to get at her. And we did the scene, we got the notes, and we're ready to go. He's all he's getting himself ready because he's got to defend Carly, and he's looking around. He's going, "Okay, we're ready, ready." And he just right before, like on the count, he points me and says, "You're out of breath." And I was like, oh, he's right. So, you know, you got it. I, I, wasn't you know, I wasn't prepared for the start of the scene. And he wasn't being mean or anything. He was just reminding me, like, I know we have this break in between, but you're, you have to pick this up where we left it off, and you're out of breath. And I always remember, I'll, I'll, I don't know why that stands out, stands out to me, he, because he was so, um, he was so um, kind about it, and yet, um, it, yet teaching at the same time. 
that's one of the, the uh, biggest memories I have about him. And then he also gave, I still have it in there. He gave it to my son, Ben, um, a book that Benjamin, Benji Hendrickson's uh, dentist had given him. <laughs> and it, um, it's about a train, Benji NG. And oh, it wow. talks about, having, so I, I can, I, uh, it talks about looking around. It's about a train. It needs to look around. Remember to look around. Remember to look around and enjoy what's happening around you. And he signed it and gave it to my Benji, my son, when Ben was, my Ben was like two. And I still, of course, have that. But pranks, I don't know. I mean, he was, I mean, he was more funny. Were there pranks, Michael? Or was it like off stage? I don't know if you were there. Uh, he's so just, when I did a thing with Scott Holmes and Ellen and Scott told the oh, story. Oh, those two. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, those are the guys to ask about, yeah. Yeah, Scott talked about him walking into the makeup room in his tidy whities cowboy boots, I think, and something else. <laughs> yeah, Scott's the one with the best, with the best with the best stories. Uh, and, and all I heard, I, I heard them secondhand and I'm sure Maura did too. We heard a lot of secondhand stories okay. from back in the day. And um, uh, boy, I still reiterate. <laughs> we can't I still, tell you those stories. I though. can't, I can't, but I can still reiterate <laughs> all of them. Right. <laughs> his John Houseman, his John Houseman was on, oh. on par. It was just, uh, it, it, yeah, there's some great stories out there. One thing I do remember is, I was doing this amnesia storyline, right? So, because Mora was going off to have Kate, was it Kate or was it? Was I don't it know which one of them it was. I, yeah, but I like to, uh, it's a timeline situation. So she left and I had this amnesia. And I'm uh, uh, and I'm like, I, Benji, I remember being in his room going, Benji, I'm pacing back and forth. I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm so out of my, out of my element right now. I watched all the Born Element movies or Born Identity movies and I'm like, I just don't know. He says, Mikey, just make every choice logical. And for some reason, this has went, <clears throat> just make every choice logical. That just made all the sense in the world to me. And I still use that information and that, that little piece of advice to this day. Just make it logical. Make Whatever you do, just make a logical choice. And it, and it really, really helped. Another one I do remember is, you remember he was waiting for years and years and years to be in a magazine. Do you remember this? Do you remember this mojo? Was it was it was it uh, soap opera digest or was it like soap opera weekly? Are we talking about the great weekly the soap opera shoot weekly. with the photo shoot with you, Annie? No, no, it was just it was a solo. It was the giant one. It was, it was when it solo. was a big yeah. paper. Soap opera weekly. It yeah, was a solo opera. interview, and it was one of his first solo interviews without Ellen, without Scott, without yeah, any of like, us in it. And it was like yeah. boom, he's been waiting for years and years and years. <laughs> You open it up and it's like the centerfold. It was incredible. Yep. And, uh, and across the top, it said, Benjamin Henderson. <gasps> no. So for, that was just his luck, man. That was uh -huh. his luck. I remember he had this little thing on his forehead that he was getting. It was a little... Um, I don't know what it's called. Like a kind of a cysty type. Kind thing. of like a cysty type thing. And he's stressing out about it and he's getting older. And I, you know, I apologize, Benjamin, right now for all the things I said about age. And, and, you know, I was, I was goofing around all the time with him about how, you know, oh, come on, old man. And it just, it was so wrong and rude now that I think about it because I'm getting a lot of it from my friends. <laughs> but also I was wrong. Uh, because he did everything I did and we, we did it together and it was fun. We golfed a lot together. And I remember he had this thing in his head and I'm like, would you just take care of it? Stop stressing out about it. Cause he's stressed out about it. Remember this mojo? He's stressed out about it for forever. And I said, just get it done, man. Just go dermatologist, have him take it out. Oh, it's fine. Then stitch it up. It'll be no big deal. Done. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he gets, he comes to my, <laughs> after he gets it done. It's a lot, Mike. I remember he knocks on my door in my apartment on 83rd Street with a bandana around his head as he wore so often. Yeah, he did. He takes it off and it's just like a huge gaping hole in his head. He goes, just get it done, Mike. No, just get it done, Benji. It's no big deal, Benji. It'll take no time at all. It won't leave a scar at all, Benji. And he just threw it oh, And I was so, I'm so sorry, Benjamin. I'm so sorry. But, it uh, is one of my favorite photos, though, of the four of you. On, it was like you're all in denim on a bench. It was you, you, Annie, Benji. Yeah. 
don't know if you remember oh, that we're one. We're all in denim, huh? That must be a great shot. Okay. <laughs> were all of our shirts tucked in? I think you were all blue. It was all like blue and white or something like that. I don't know if it was denim. <laughs> no, I remember that. I, I, do. I, I, I do remember that photo shoot because it was this thing where Carly really wanted to be with Jack, but Jack, Julie wanted to be with Jack too. And, 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 but, but, um, what's Ow. his face wanted to be with, how wanted to be with Carly and do they already have the yeah. kid by then? I don't even, yeah, they did. They had, they'd had the little guy, the little guy. You had and, to have um, the, you had to have the, the guy by midnight. Is that the guy you had to have by midnight? To get oh, your yeah. inheritance. And, and, and be married to the yeah. father in order yeah. to get the money. Yeah, and that's how that? I got in that great storyline with Larry Brigman. Who was how was that? Show. What was that Absolutely. like? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, he, what an extraordinary actor Larry Brigman is. My God. Um, but I remember one time, you know, because I was still relatively new and I didn't really, I, I, I really don't, still don't, but I don't really complain about a lot. We'll, we'll talk about it. We would talk about it in the dressing room and go, oh, Jesus, you know, here we go. But by the time we got to the set, we're like, go, we're ready to go. But I remember one and time. And you made every page work. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the job. But I remember just what one time Larry having a hard time because he had to he had to inseminate Carly with like a turkey baster. So he was like, "What am I doing? What am I doing?" I, like, I, just, I remember there was a bag on uh, on set. I just put the bag over my head and laid threw, threw myself on the floor and said, "Let me know when we're going to do the scene." Right. I, I, to I, quote I, the great, I, hey, to quote the great <laughs> Scott DeFreitas, sometimes you just got to throw some mustard on that shit sandwich and take a big old bite. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And That's then a great that, quote. A, a shit burger. And then shit you can burger. do that. Yeah. And then you could add on the Mora West addendum, which is have a little Miller Light. Walk <laughs> <laughs> it down. It's just fine. <laughs> oh, hey. I'm getting a phone call. Oh, oh Michael. You're um, don't they know you're busy? Yeah. It's from. It's from uh, uh, Louisiana. I don't know anybody in Louisiana. Um, <laughs> Michael, we, we, we definitely, before we go, I want to, you know, what was the experience like? Because I know uh, of Dear Evan Hansen, mm. because I know the subject matter meant a lot to you, having three children. So mm. if you can put that into words. What, what, what's the question? Just, just the experience of doing that play, the subject, you know, Ben Platt, the whole, I mean, you have a Grammy, an you Emmy know, for that. Um, uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, those two little things you got for that show. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ben Platt. Um, but, uh, I, you know, every once in a while you do, and I hate this cliche, but it's kind of true when you catch lightning in a bottle, you just got to, you know, ride it out for as long as, as, as it's, 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 you know, alive. And that show, when we did the original readings of it, uh, you just – at the very first table read when I was invited to come by Michael Greif. And I was like, for, first of all, to be asked by Michael Greif to come and sit down in a room with him is just uh, a blessing in itself. But then to open this and he asked us all not to read ahead. I had worked with uh, Rachel before. I had met Ben before we did another reading together. A couple other people um, I, I had met, but for the most part, we, you know, we were kind of new to this material. All of us were, so we opened it. And and Pasek and Paul were playing the songs and and singing the songs. And right they next wrote to they wrote Christmas Story. Correct. Yeah. So they, you know, there's always it's a very it is a very small sort of world. You very know? very Connect, small world. But this is before they really popped off. You know, they really they really hit it off. Um, and so I, you know, you're sitting there and and, and you don't know this, but but. Justin Paul plays the piano like a percussion instrument. I remember he broke a string. He broke a, a piano string playing the piano. So it was just, it was something electric about them sitting to my, well, I remember them sitting to my left. That's why I'm referring to them in this way. And then reading this story and everybody just sobbing. And, you know, it wasn't about me. It wasn't about Ben Platt. Uh, at, the, at the time, it wasn't about anybody else in the room. It was about this beautiful piece of work in front of you. And for the long, I, I, you know, it's something you like you search for your whole life to do, to be a part of and, and to get to perform. And so that I could not believe I, I, I struck such good, good fortune that day. And I remember walking out every again and everyone was in tears and thank God Michael said not to read ahead. Cause it also gave us the freedom to make a mistake and not feel bad about it too. Um, in a cold read situation like that. But I remember walking out and, and, and calling my, my team, my, my agent sound really actory and say, uh, and say, whatever 
whatever this comes up, clear the decks for this untitled PPL piece. At the time, that's what it was called. Clear the decks for it, please. And just stay on them to make sure that I'm still a part of it. And then when we got to put it on its feet, we'd done a number of, of workshops, but then when we got to put it on its feet in Washington, we realized how, how special the show was and how it was reaching so many people and how many people related to it. Um, and I, I remember being a little heartbroken when we got the, the, the meeting, the meeting saying that, Hey, you know what? We're going to take this show guys. Cause we were waiting to hear in Washington, whether or not it was just going to go to Broadway. Cause I thought it was good. Hey Baz, I thought it was going to be good enough to go to Broadway, but they said, no, we're going to have another stop at, um, at uh, second stage. And I remember being heartbroken cause I was, contracted uh to do uh talk everlasting and so i remember just going i'm so happy for you guys i'm so happy for you guys <laughs> and just going and sitting down and just uh, and just trying to be happy trying to be positive and along comes stacy mindich our executive producer and or our our lead producer i should say to say michael this isn't the end of the road for you don't worry about it we know we know what's what's going on and so it was it was wonderful that the production companies that handled Tuck Everlasting and handled uh, Darevin Hansen were, were the same in essence, and they were able to work that out. So there's a lot of backstage stuff that happened uh, to make it all work, but I, you know, it's a special I'll show. Be, I'll be that... chasing that dragon, Alan, for a long, 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 long time. I'll be chasing that... and everything. Everything has to kind of measure up. And, and it, it gave me such a wonderful sense of what needs to be done and what needs to be fixed and, and how to speak up and how to handle certain people with kid gloves in order to get um, to, to get to, to make changes in a script or in a song or something like that. And that's all to the fact due to the fact that Michael Greif had those kind of fantastic uh, abilities to talk to you and ask you questions and listen. And same thing with Ben Platt, always, always, always questioning and always listening and always making changes and never being satisfied. And I, you know, it just made me a better, again, Maura West made me and a better being actor. being collaborative, being collaborative, yeah. right? It's really what we're Maura, talking about. Maura did the same thing. Maura did the same thing. Made me a better actor. Michael Greif made me a better actor. Those two people in my life, without them, I don't know where I'd be. The music I remember when Michael out. told me he was doing something, something special, it was just something special. He, he couldn't talk about it. You know, I don't even think you'd gotten all, the, you know, your name on the ink down and all that. Um, and then uh, I was, I was probably one of your last friends to see it, right? Because uh, I live out here. I got this pack of kids. I, I right. it's going on. Yeah. But um, he, he made sure that my parents went to see it and they get them some. My parents, my parents see him in everything, by the way. So even they go, they go because they love him. They love him independently of me, but they also go in my stead, which uh, I, good I, I think is really, you know, moving. that's awesome. So if yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little easier from, from Massachusetts than yeah. it is from California. They're, they're good, uh, good people. So then, but then when I got to, to, to see it myself with Joseph and Catherine, we went uh. to see it together. And I can't imagine I, seeing it with with your children, and I can't imagine Michael, your children seeing you, let oh alone. But God, but more going to that emotional show with yeah. children, and then also you know that I have a I have a special needs son, so just from the perspective of that show being so beautiful about you will be found. I mean, it's, it resonates every day. I carry it with me. And so I can only imagine what it's like for you, Michael, carrying that with you as you go. It changed me changed my life. And I, I'm just someone who saw, well, I saw you, I saw it. <laughs> um, and you know that feeling, I remember my mother saying it first, because she really, it's very simple, but she put it in very simple words. And she said that feeling of when you see somebody doing what they're meant to do. Oh, he and is. I always, seen that, I always seen that with Michael on TV and everything. You can, you, you can shit, you turn on TV, he's going to be at somewhere. He does, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the stage, the stage, the stage. Yeah. And, and I was like, Phew. and I'd seen him in Burt Park Boys. It wasn't the first thing I'd I'd seen, but it, that it overwhelmed me. That that feeling of seeing, really seeing someone do what they're meant to do. It's extremely pow It's extremely powerful as a viewer, right? As an audience member, totally. it, it, it's yeah, and you you can't let it go. It's it stays with you. The minute and it I would hear have stayed with you. Whether I knew him or not. The minute I hear his voice on that soundtrack, the hair on my arm stands up. <sighs> well, that, that it, song it, it, it's a special show. Mara, before I forget, you know, like the Daytime Cares event we did, we're, I'm doing one tomorrow night with Guiding Light yeah. 
for the Autism Society of America. Oh. Oh, that's is that the no? That's not the Stars and Stripes. Is that the no? Stars yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, daytime. Yeah, oh. for Guiding Light. It's Guiding Light. You, turned into this. Yeah. yeah it, it is because yeah. they normally yeah. do it in person, so it, we're doing it online. So yeah. Oh, that's great. I'm glad. Yeah, we're doing that tomorrow yeah. night. Mark, can you talk about um, your your family on World Turns? Uh, Rosanna, um, uh, Gwen, and, and your friendship mm -hmm. with Colleen. Me? Yeah. Is this to me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, look, you know, these are these are these are relationships that never end. I mean, they are, it's, it's part of my life. It's part of my heart. It's part of who I am. It's, it's, it's built into me now, you know, all of these people. I mean, I see, I work with, it, it is such a small world. And now here I am, I've worked with John Lindstrom again, who yeah. I married on that show, <laughs> and I'm on this show. And you know, he's nominated tonight too. So I'm like, fingers are crossed for him. Um, and he's married to Katie McClain, he's <laughs> his sister. And so, so we're still, you know, we're, you know, we're very close. We're constantly checking with each other, you know, even if it's somebody that you don't see a lot, Michael, don't you find yourself just checking in with people? Like, you know, I just check, I just check in, thinking about you, thinking about you, thinking Absolutely. about you. Absolutely. Um, and it, 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 it could be an emoji or something like that. Usually you and I toss an emojis around because we're cool. <laughs> You're hip. Well, I, I know I'm not. He might be. I, I, I'm reminded every day in this house how non hip I am. Uh, but no, I mean these are people that will always they'll, they'll always be in my life. I mean, where would I be without them? Where would I be without that that experience of as the world turns? It's in. It's a carry it. It's just with me all the time. And um, you know, Colleen and I will talk. I, I was going to get Birdie a little. I ended up not, but I was interested in getting her bird for her birthday and. So she's a birder. So I check in with her, and what's the bet? You know, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a constant, continuous relationship. Forever. Yeah, actually, I need to text her because she's in Florida. I just realized that I should text her. Who's in Hopefully Florida? She, Colleen. Colleen. She went, yeah. yeah, she had been in Colleen uh, in Florida for a while, and yeah. I did a show with Jen Landon, and it was so good to see that face. Oh yeah, she's a I, very special person. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Totally miss her. She was. She was a good one. Um, Michael, what was it like being a, a Snyder on World Terms? Ka oh, and Kathleen really Widow. Know. Yeah, well, Kathleen Widows. Oh my <laughs> god, what a treasure of a human being that is. We were all we were all so so lucky to be around that energy, man. Why she never <laughs> butterballs? I'll never forget Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving at the Snyder yeah. table. She, boy, did she have to? She had to sell. She had to sell butterball turkeys, you know, because it was product placement. Oh, we but, did. Oh we God. did that one year. Oh boy, God, did she put an S on the end of butterballs turkey every <laughs> single time? Cut. What am I saying? What's happening? What's going on? Why? Oh, I'm sorry. But then she did. There you go. Oh, it's a butterballs. She would just <laughs> lightly throw. She would lightly throw the S. Oh my God! Just one of the funniest, most beautiful human beings. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know what I was, what I, how, how again, I, I, I'm saying this all day. It's like a, it's like a mantra of mine. I have no idea how fortunate I am all the time. Whenever I walk into a room, I'm very fortunate to be in that room uh, with these fantastic people. And um, yeah, to, to, to be around that energy and especially the, the history of, of Kathleen Widows and all the work she's done in her life before uh, as the world mm -hmm. turns, uh, um, learned a lot, learned a lot about not taking yourself too seriously. And you know it, it rubbed off, and same thing with uh, with uh, Martha. And you know, jo John, whenever he was around those women, boy, did he change. He just opened up a little bit. You know, it was it was nice to see that change uh, with with John. Um, but yeah, it was fun. It, I mean, it had its trials. It had its tribulations. I learned but something. We, I learned something from Kathleen. And, 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 and Michael, you is it clean? Did, yes. Is it clean? <laughs> I learned some dirty things too. I won't talk about that. <laughs> uh, no, I remember her we all she, did. She, she's, she's, she was the first person who really kind of put into words what happens in certain times when you do, when you are prepared, but you go up, right? You forget a line. And she would say, oh, because something really, because something we shared, because something real happened. Did you remember, Mike? I'm sure she said this yeah. to you because obviously yeah. you, you went up a lot, I'm sure, with her. <laughs> Just because that was your thing. <laughs> no, but she, um, she, she, <laughs> she, she's just one of the. She's the first person who kind of put it into words that sometimes you're like, 
you said you're 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 hit with some with some some reality and the acting kind of steps aside and the characters come to life for a minute and sometimes you'll um that'll make an actor forget their line forget their next line because they're so involved in what this magical thing that just happened but the idea right is to sustain that magical thing to sustain mm. that and stay in it even when that magical real stuff is happening and and not go up not forget your line just sort of go with it and make make, make it work any any way you can because that's the good stuff that's the juice that's the good mm. stuff and um that's and that's when i started working on that and there was less kind of faking and more um more grounded stuff that i was trying to do and seeing if i could get if i could get through it without so much kind of faking it does that make mm -hmm. sense i mean people listened when emma snyder spoke there oh yeah. No, yeah, yeah there yeah. is no there is no doubt about that she more was the one i think she was the one i think it told me hey listen you never want to get caught acting you never want to get caught you know, just let it flow, let it go. But you never want to get caught acting. Oh, what? That's a really great line. Yeah, I don't know if it was her, but I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, it sounds like something she would, mm -hmm. she would say. Yeah, um, no, sh yeah, yeah. Mara, what's the biggest difference between Ava Jerome and Carly Tenney? Besides their age. <laughs> <laughs> They're still hot. Am I right, Scott? Hot, hot. hot. They're still hot. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're they're different. If you watch them, if you watch them, if you watch Car Carly, you definitely see it's the same face, it's the same voice, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but 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 Ava Jerome is sort of. Um, I loved that Carly Tenney was um, less refined. I loved that about. I loved that about her. I didn't mind it at all. Just get ugly. She pronounced a couple words wrong, which I did with intent um so, some kind of she was a little gruffer you know um and ava a a ava's just very um she's very refined right she's 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 a true lady or she, or so she thinks and, and one of one of the fans just wrote carly wasn't a murderer <laughs> well we can, we can debate about ava i, I don't call her that i can because remember well, there's like i was saying term. earlier i can justify anything you know right. you just that, that anything. very funny so, well i, I gotta agree. tell you <laughs> i gotta tell you how many people i mean you made me of course because i love you both but the fans love here you, you you've made uh incredibly happy seeing you know fans oh, from all God. over this country and of course our dutch fans from as the world turns yeah michael I, I i'd love to just get your take because i know you uh went out for the black lives matter moment and oh, yeah. protest and protested and you know what was that experience like well it's, i was i've been doing a lot of you know these these guided meditations actually that's what kind of drew I, I i that's what kind of drew me to make the decision to go out um and i during one of them we were all having a conversation and i said i'm not doing for some reason i'm paralyzed here i'm paralyzed i don't know what to do and i know i should be doing something and and i'm not really sure and one of my friends said um I can keep you updated on where these these marches are happening if you want to go out and march. And I'm like, Th thank you. Yes, please, anything. I, I, I just, again, felt so helpless because the quarantine, and do I do it, do I not? I've got kids. I, I want to go see my parents, um, my mom, sorry, my mom uh, in like two weeks or so. And so I was just, uh, and what's happening in our country right now is just so fucking terrible. That, yes. and, and it's just, uh, so I, I'm, I, so anyway, I felt really frustrated and my friend said, I'll keep you updated. And so probably like a half an hour later, he said, there's um, some protest action happening in, in Washington Square Park. Why don't you head there? And so I grabbed the kids. I came downstairs and said, guys, in the car now, grab waters, grab your masks. We're going. And it was one of the most, one of the most amazing moments I shared with my kids. Lori was a little upset that she couldn't make it, but I mean, it was, it was the energy was in, it was incredible. It, I, I wish I could explain it. It's inexplicable. Um, just being there. And I remember, you know, the, the chant saying, say her name, Brianna Taylor, say her name, Brianna Taylor. And I remember just weeping a little bit because again, this is something that's larger than any one of us really. And then and something, and something us three sadly don't fully grasp I mean, God, just, you know what i just been, never I'm lived privileged, i'm an extremely privileged man yeah. I'm, a, I'm a cis male 
I've been very, very fortunate in my life, mainly because I'm a male and because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a white guy. And I know, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, I know this. Raising my hand. Truth. I've been very privileged in my life. Um, and so uh, that's part of my frustration. Uh, but then towards the end of that march, to like 32nd Street. It went on for a while. We went to 32nd Street and we're kneeling every once in a while. And again, so emotional. Um, and we get to 32nd Street or 33rd Street and this old elderly black woman on the side who is, you know, is not walking, uh, just hands in the air saying, thank you. Thank you to all the protesters that are walking by her. And I, you know, I remember looking at Kathleen and there's tears going down her, down her face. It was just a very, very emotional and very special moment for, for our family to see that and to, and to be part of that. Something that's going on that's bigger, 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 way bigger than bigger we than, Yes, it, it's way bigger than us. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, I know I wish I, I'm a little high risk uh, due to some medication I take. So, you know, it, I, I had to make a decision not to put myself in that position. Right. But I would have, I would have really. Viagra does that? <laughs> Ah, that's I'm, kidding. Good. I'm kidding, folks. I'm kidding. <laughs> jokes. That's good. Good jokes. Well, I can't tell you how much you made me happy today. And I know I'm speaking more or less for all the fans who are on the side here writing. We all are rooting for you tonight, my dear. Take yes. It. Look, take it. Take it. <laughs> take it. Take it. Take it. Please give your families my love. Certainly. Stay love. well. And uh, I'll just say sign off, but I'll put you guys backstage and we'll talk for a minute. Okay, Bye, guys. Michael, I, love you. I love you, Michael. I love don't you. go anywhere, Maura. I said it first. I want you to know I said it first. I love you. <laughs> Stay backstage. Thank you, everybody, for watching today. I hope you enjoyed that. Have a great weekend.